We had a lot of geniuses share their reactions to my videos in the comments over the past few months, and I'm a man who likes to foster healthy debate and conversation, so that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. I pulled a lot more comments than last time, and there are some hilarious and unexpected bits, so let's just go ahead and jump into it. I'm going to start you guys off with a nice and easy comment, a bit of lighthearted fun, and this is perhaps the best comment I've ever received. I really like this video, unlike your last video, suck ass. You know, I'm just going to say it, this commenter is kind of a giga chad. He refuses to abide by normal English conventions of capitalization and punctuation. He just gets all of his thoughts out in one single phrase. I can respect that, to be honest. This is a breath of fresh air compared to some of the other commenters who feverishly write unhinged novels desperately trying to debunk me. And also, this comment really displays the duality of man. On one hand, it is a gracious and nice comment. He really likes the video. But on the other hand, he is cold, brutal, and blunt, outright saying he thought the last video, quote, suck ass. For this next comment, there's a lot to unpack. He said, quote, This is potentially one of the most brain-dead takes I've heard in 2024. Firstly, if you want to highlight differences between the 90s Ninja Turtle movie and a new one, the first place... I look is the general quality of those two films. It might be controversial to say, but the 90s Ninja Turtle movie is not good. The new one is well animated, funny, clever, and perhaps a bit thought provoking. If you couldn't tell, that one is kind of hard to read. It's like he just sprinkled commas all throughout, but I'm, I'm just gonna ignore that, okay? So, we already know what kind of person we're dealing with. The kind of person who would unironically enjoy Mutant Mayhem more than the 1990 movie, and go as far as to say the 1990 movie is not good. You just have bad taste at this point. He went on to say, You correctly note that we have a more nuanced understanding of theft in the 21st century. But no, that's not what I said at all. You're just projecting your deranged worldview onto me. I don't think we have a more nuanced understanding of theft now than we did in the 90s. Hell, I think even 18th century philosophers understood theft better than we do now, as I demonstrated by using Kantian ethics in that very same video. The only nuance to theft that we have now in the 21st century is that people now think it's okay if you are poor or black to steal, which, by the way, is pretty insulting to black people, that's not nuance, that's insanity. That sort of thinking is what leads to stores shutting down, leaving people without the option to either buy or steal. It's childish, stupid, and downright evil. He goes on to say, We do not live in an ideal world until such time, and there is a way for people who are starving and have needs that aren't fulfilled to get what they need to live, we should have sympathy for those who are forced to crime. Dog, what the actual fuck are you saying? Nobody is forced to do crime, especially in the United States. Just get a job. Literally just work and you won't starve. The US has the highest income per capita out of any country in the world. That means that people in the US make more money than anyone else in the entire world. And despite inflation, the US also has cheaper food prices than many first world countries. In 2021, the United States was ranked as having the most affordable, regular, and vegan essentials in the world. Look at it this way. During the Great Depression, people would patiently wait in line for just a little bit of food while their families were starving. They would desperately try to get employment. Most people didn't resort to stealing and looting and murdering their neighbor for bread or whatever you think people are doing. 
they would desperately try to get a job. That's what they wanted. They wanted to work. They wanted to support their family through legal and moral means. And that is really the mark of a strong civilization. The conduct of its people during a time of extreme crisis. I don't even want to think about all of the fucked up shit you would justify if we were living in Great Depression conditions today. It's people like you who are actively contributing to the decline of civilization. You are fucking scum. Alright, next comment. <laughs> this guy said, Bro forgot April is half black in the original 80s comics. Okay, we'll stop there. This has already been disproven. If you're still parroting this dumb shit at this point, then you are just willfully ignorant. You are just ignoring reality. April was not originally black. What kind of person even makes this kind of comment anyway? I was curious. So I took a look at his profile and... Oh man. I don't even know if I should show this to you guys. It is absolutely degenerate. Aw oh, screw it, I'll let you guys see. Yeah, it's all, oh my god, it's all feeder or fat fetish videos. This is the kind of person who defends Mutant Mayhem April. Honestly, I think this really does speak volumes about the psyche of Mutant Mayhem April defenders. They're probably just fetishizing her because she's so fucking disgusting. Oh my god. Alright, what else do we have here? Oh, oh yeah, this is a good one. So this guy calls me a chud, as if that's some kind of big offensive insult or something. If anything, I welcome the chud label. The chud remains undefeated. But what's really funny is that I always remind viewers to subscribe at the end of my videos, which he is clearly referencing right there. So even though he's calling me a chud and an incel, He's admitting that he watched my video all the way to the very end. All I can really do at this point is thank him. He's not only boosting my engagement by commenting, but he's also boosting my watch hours and watching my videos to the end. He truly is a genius and the number one Tataruzu fan. I also had a couple comments call me a quote Trump supporter and quote MAGA Ninja Turtles channel and you might be wondering why. Basically, it started with this really cringe-worthy tweet by the Ninja Turtle Power Hour podcast, where they promoted violence against Trump while hilariously misspelling the word fascist. But my fellow YouTuber, my Ninja Turtles channel, had a great response, which I highlighted on my community tab. And I guess that's why I'm the MAGA Ninja Turtles channel, because I think political violence is wrong. But really, I think that says a lot more about your politics than it does mine. Similarly, I received a comment that said, Wake up babe, a TMNT channel with racist undertones just dropped. Why did he say that? Well, because I said the Ninja Turtles probably shouldn't be stealing in a movie that was primarily marketed toward children. Guys, you can't make this stuff up. So if you are against theft, then you are apparently racist. This is honestly more racist than anything I've ever said. I didn't say white people are never thieves, but in the mind of this person, Theft equals black people. If you are against theft, you are against black people. That's what you think, and I'm the racist person? Alright dog. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say to that. This next comment chain just blew my mind. So I made a video about Bob, a character that Sophie Campbell introduced to the IDW comics. And this guy wrote, Bob was from the Archie TMNT comics, and the woman named Carmen was also an Archie too. So I wrote Archie with the dead emoji because number one, I wasn't talking about the Archie comics, I was talking about the IDW comics, so it was just kind of irrelevant to bring up. And number two, the Archie comics aren't that great. And someone else chimed in, that's pretty interesting. 
it also shows that this guy doesn't know much about the turtle's history. But if you had watched the video, you would have heard that I said Sophie Campbell introduced Bob to the IDW comics. I never said Sophie created Bob. I never said Bob didn't exist prior to IDW. I was very careful to intentionally use the word introduce literally multiple times in the video. But because I didn't make a passing fucking comment about Archie Bob, who is completely irrelevant to the topic at hand, that means I don't know about the turtle's history? So do I just need to explain the backstory of all iterations of every single character I mention now? That's fucking retarded! If you want in-depth retellings of all characters and all their iterations, there are different channels for that, but that's not what that video was about. And this stuff about Carmen comes from a joke I made in the video where I said, Who is that again? The joke is that Carmen has been an inconsequential part of the story and has had zero impact. I shouldn't have to explain what is such an obvious tongue-in-cheek joke. This next comment started out with her saying I'm a piece of shit, so we know it's going to be a banger. According to her, the only reason we still have the turtles is because of marketing. Yeah, fair enough. But at this point, maybe the TMNT shouldn't be around anymore if they keep pumping out garbage. I'm a TMNT fan, but I'll be more than happy to pass up something that doesn't seem like it's worth my time. I'm obviously not the type of person that happily eats up any slop that has a TMNT logo on it. Look, I do enjoy the 87 cartoon, the 1990 movie, and the original toy line, but let's say the TMNT had stayed an independent passion project, like Dave Sims' Cerebus, which had a 27-year-long satisfying run with 300 issues. That very well could have been Mirage TMNT, had executives not gotten their grubby hands on it. We'll never know, and it's impossible to say, but I'll be the first to say I enjoy TMNT the most when it is the product of Eastman and or Laird's passion, rather than just a corporate product. She went on to say, You wanted a 32-year-old red-headed woman with 38 Ds? That's also marketing, bro. Okay, first of all, yes, that is what I want. But no, that's not marketing. That was the idea of Eastman and Laird for issue number two of TMNT. It was an independent project without any marketing executive's fingerprints on it. April was a product of passion. So moving on, I also received two comments from people asking me to leave my mother's basement because I didn't like how they ruined April's character. The whole leave your mom's basement thing must be projection from these people because I have a wife and I own my own home. I don't need to stay in my mom's basement. But considering these are the same people who also justify theft and crime, I'm assuming they still live at home because obviously they don't have a fucking job. But what's really funny is the cognitive dissonance in this comment right here. They wrote that, quote, They didn't make April black to make her better. Well, that's kind of funny because I'm pretty sure I never said the word better in that video. This commenter seems to be unintentionally hinting at what they actually believe, which is that black characters are better than white characters, but they are feigning ignorance by saying April was made black only because the team wanted her to be black for no particular reason, so there were no ulterior motives at all according to this person. But then, they go on to say that, quote, This was not made with you in mind. So they're talking about the Mutant Mayhem movie. They're saying it wasn't made for white people in mind. And ultimately, I really think that hits the nail on the head and contradicts what she had literally just said before. No, they didn't make April Black just because they wanted to. They made April Black because they were making a movie that, quote, isn't for me. In other words, they were intentionally making a movie 
that wasn't for TMNT fans and wasn't for white people. They were intentionally going out of their way to alienate their older fans, because if you say it was, quote, not made with me in mind, then what else am I supposed to think? As a bonus, we'll go over one more comment. This time, it's by someone who is apparently a subscriber of the channel. I usually won't go in on subscribers or regular commenters, but I just couldn't pass this one up. He said, You had to ruin it by saying soy boy. GTFO anti-SJW derangement syndrome. Vegan for 10 years. Go fuck yourself. Damn, vegans are really sensitive. Maybe it's all of the soy you're injecting that is making your estrogen run wild to make you so sensitive. Nah, I'm just kidding. I don't have anything against vegans. It's not for me, but truly, what you decide to eat as an adult is none of my business. All the more power to you. Anyway, that's all for this video. Let me know your thoughts down below, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.